First of all, uh, I'd like to apologize for coming in late. Uh, 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 the, the, you'd never know what would happen in our talks because uh, we had so many things in line for us today. And one of the uh, part of the program was really, I think it was second, was a national security uh, meeting. You know, when you get to talk about the security of the country, you, you go into so many gamut of topics. You have to deal with the problem of Mindanao, then what's happening now on the communist front, and what are the demands. But I'd like uh, to also to make it public, actually, that uh, uh, everything is uh, s going on smoothly in Oslo with the talk with the communists, except uh, for the recent demand that uh, they need another 130 re releases uh, of uh, prisoners. And I said to Secretary Doresa and Bello, or the, the negotiators, I said, look guys, you tell the communists that I have, as a matter of fact, cons conceded too many too soon. All of the leaders are out. And the only reason why I agreed that they should be out is because they had to do the talking in another country, and that's in Oslo. Uh, but to be asking for another 130 releases, uh, I, 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 you tell them, produce uh, to me, uh, show me a, an agreement, a, a tight uh, uh, document signed by even with the Norway guys who provided the good offices so to sign it and uh, I will consider. But do not make too much demands because I am the republic and you are the rebel. And if you are not ready to accept that kind of mindset uh, at this time, uh, I am ready to you know, terminate the talks. You don't make so much demands that are really uh, to, I may have to consider the views of the military and uh, the police. And uh, I have to be not really fair, but uh, some sort of a tactical move uh, that would uh, be understood by all, including, I said, the military and the police. And uh, 130. And also, today we took... Uh, consideration of the Maoti rebellion going on in Lanao. And they said that they are willing to pull out. By the way, Ben, my classmate, uh, he helped me a lot. Tony Lopez is uh, a classmate of mine. I think he ought to be. And they demanded that uh, we stop the offensive. They are there in the forest. Uh, I don't know where. And I said they would uh, stop fighting, uh, provided we stop the uh, offensive or not. They said that they will go down upon Marawi to burn the place. And I said, go ahead. Do it. We need to do a lot of constructions in this country. There are a lot of materials there, and uh, we would be glad to rebuild and rehabilitate every structure that you destroy. As long as it's confined in the areas of land now, I don't really care. So I said, no, I will not stop the operation. As a matter of fact, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, that, that's uh, stupidity. Well, anyway, uh, I, 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 I reckon that you did not uh, maybe listen to my campaign. I was just... Uh, an ordinary guy. Part of the establishment is but coming in from the cold because um, I was not uh, a national figure. And I hardly, you know, except for Rudy, who's also my classmate. Uh, these are the guys that uh, I see now. With, uh, my, my crowd was very limited. I'm a provinciano, uh, a hillbilly style, that's uh, from the province. And uh, I said, uh, I, uh, the only guys that I know would really be the Davao Avengers. For example, Sonny Dominguez was there. 
are you really, uh, you, you want to go home uh, ahead? Go, I'll, I'll, I'll. <laughs> we grew up together. Uh, we grew up together, actually. I miss my childhood friend, and uh, he was our consistent valedictorian from kindergarten to maybe college because I, I was left behind. It took me seven years to finish high school. That's why. And uh, Rudy is cum laude. And also Ruben. Nah, me, I got only 78, but uh, it's okay. It's historical, actually. Since grade one, I, it's always in the line of seven. I, I never got a grade. Uh, few times. College of Law, yes. Uh, I remember criminal procedure. Berne Fernandez, uh, I just appointed uh, his son to take his place uh, uh, in the Santigan. Uh, uh, but in high school and college, uh, mostly 78, 79, but uh, it was okay. I, I survived it uh, along the way. But I got the best of the minds. Tugade is... Uh, a billionaire, actually, and uh, I think he was the valedictorian of the class. And a lot of them are really with honors, graduated with honors. And sadly, even Sunny, who was the voice of America champion during our time, nationally, uh, um, studied abroad, and uh, all the guys, all the bright guys are actually working for me. They're yeah, just my, you know. <laughs> when the 75 talks, the 95 listen. <laughs> and that is good. <laughs> it's uh, the, the quirks of life, really. But uh, let me dwell first on, we're getting short of time. Let me dwell on what I promised the people of the Republic of the Philippines. I said that uh, I will end corruption. And I'm doing everything, actually. And uh, if there's a uh, consolation to you, uh, I have opened the, uh, uh, the PTV of the government. There is a time there uh, after the news. It's only a plain sp uh, screen, and you can call 8888, and you tell me what the problem is. Text it. I will read it. You might want to just also not divulge your, uh, it's OK with me. Uh, uh, tell us the office that you're dealing with and uh, the guy that is uh, pestering you. Tell me about your complaints and I, I will act immediately. So in that way, the people of the Philippines would see who are the corrupt officials of this government. I am really bent on giving this country a respite of the so many years under a corrupt administration. I am not, I am not the, 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 the nice guy uh, in the neighborhood, but uh, I feel that uh, at this age, at 72, <coughs> I'm about to end my, I've been mayor of Dabo City for 23 years a congressman and a vice mayor to my daughter. I feel that this is, uh, would really be my last hurrah, and uh, I'd like to give the country what they have been desperately craving for, and that is a government, at least with less corruption, or none at all, but you know, it's hard kind of, uh, hard thing to do. <coughs> And so I'm doing everything. And I just fired about 92 
uh, officials of B uh, LFTRB and uh, LTO. It's because of this regulation. If I were to make a choice, actually, I would uh, maybe uh, order the least intervention of government into the private lives or sectors. The more regulation, there's more corruption. It's uh, actually a temptation to corruption. And so when I became president, and this is the rule, uh, when I was uh, mayor, I applied for a small railway to run the double city streets because it's being con it's really congested. And you know what? Uh, I applied uh, in NEDA. Uh, because you have to get the approval of NEDA without a sovereign uh, guarantee. Took them about until now <laughs> to, to draw to, to it to the basket. Takes you about three to four years. It's because of corruption. When I came, became president, all of them, Rudy and the rest, Sunny, he said, all the departments, you only have one month. Either you approve it or disapprove it, but uh, do the action within one month. And for the local governments, I said, uh, I'm not uh, pulling my own chair, but follow the practice of the vow. All of the things there, uh, for example, the business permit, uh, electrical connections and everything, three days. Now, if you feel that uh, you're getting the go around, you are free to come here. Just make an arrangement. Uh, you have uh, or secretaries uh, for uh, the technology uh, or uh, anybody you know in government. Uh, I'm sure you know Bing Bong, the executive secretary. If you want, uh, I said, if you're getting the go around, give me your papers here in Malacanan, and I will do the follow-ups. I'll give it to the secretary because they have one month to act on it. So that's it. If you do not have faith in a certain department because uh, you have a, a, a horrible experience there, and uh, if you think that you have antagonized some people there, give me your papers, and I will do the walking for you. Simple as that. I am... Uh, There are things cropping up now. You will hear it, but uh, we're still investigating. And I said that uh, there can never no friendship in this kind of setup. This is not mine to give. As you are wont to say, if you are there in public service, uh, I would not brook any kind of. Uh, just tell me. Uh, you you you're free to do it uh, either through a letter or whatever, or to Peter. I'm sure he would do it for his country. Is he Filipino? He is uh, already a Filipino. Just give him the a, a memo or a syllabus of the things that uh, have been happening, and I would be very glad to take it on from you. Uh, this is the guarantee that... Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, no corruption. The slightest tweet of uh, feel that uh, you're being milked or you're being, uh, you know, even just, uh, I, mean, I will take it from there. I have a list of uh, persons who are uh, in the, sadly, these guys were assigned in Davao, and I know that he was corrupt. He's assigned elsewhere, but uh, I had a report from the National Intelligence, uh, it's the intelligence body of the government that this guy working for the BIR is corrupt. So I'll just bring it up with Billy Dulai. Billy Dulai is, uh, he's from Baguio, and he stayed in the YMCA dormitory where I was hosting. He was with uh, Belio. And I was, uh, my roommate was Yasai. 
Uh, I'm quite surprised now because uh, whenever there's a new meeting, I would hear this guy, uh, well, I just uh, reported from Washington and uh, uh, things that I would have to do and um, and I'd be back because there's another conference. <laughs> Who is this guy talking? Is he an American? Throw him out. Uh, only Filipinos allowed there. You know, what if he was talking about, he was really from Washington, D.C., you know, Oh, he's an American. Pagtingin ko siya sa'yo pala. He talks like, really, uh, he has that droll. I, I don't know where he got it, but uh, he didn't have it uh, during my college days. <laughs> there was uh, terribly uh, wrong somewhere. But <laughs> what I know is that uh, during the martial law years, he was one of those to be arrested by the military. He was in the list. And uh, he was able to escape uh, on time, together with Maceda, and they practice law in America. That's uh, that's what I've heard. So no wonder this guy talks like. Uh, but of course, he's been used to it because he's teaching uh, in the Western Cal uh, universities. He's uh, he's quite an accomplished lawyer actually. He's bright, but he works for me. Uh, uh, he takes orders from me, from the 75. <laughs> now, let me go to this issue of uh, extrajudicial killing. You know, I said I will try to stop corruption. I will uh, deal with the drugs harshly. That's my word. And if you're listening to the debates during the, uh, the, the three rounds of debates during the campaign, that's what they said. I would be harsh. And criminality. Now, I was very strict in Davao about criminality. And I was a... a, a prosecutor for almost eight years doing trial work. I was teaching uh, criminal law, criminal evidence, criminal procedure in the police academy. So it would not surprise you that when I came to the office of the mayor, I was quite really, you know, given my background, I was very strict. And Davao City at that time was uh, a very troubled place. Seven o'clock, and you can ask anybody from Davao. It's everybody's uh, asleep. Uh, there was not uh, a single entertainment uh, house there, except for the bars uh, in the slum areas. And there were a lot of killings, uh, military men, killing the NPAs and MPAs, uh, uh, they were being killed left and right. We used to lose uh, in Davao City two, three policemen a day. So when I became mayor, I had to tackle the problem of law and order. And the first thing I did was really to talk to the communists. And I told him that, you know, I do not want a quarrel with you. We became friends because when I was a prosecutor, I was only assigned three cases to handle. Because nobody would touch uh, the, uh, the, the case with the 10-foot pole. And that was uh, military uh, offenders, uh, police offenders, and uh, rebels, rebellion. Those were the only things that I had to worry when I was a, a prosecutor. I was not assigned to any other cases because nobody, I said, would touch the, the rebellion cases, especially against the military. So I, I, they know me well because most of the policemen were also my students. So when I became uh, mayor, I told him, I was prosecuting the uh, rebellion cases. So that uh, whenever there's a hearing, we became fast friends because, you know, you, do, you have to be courteous to everybody. And I would go to them and 
shake their hands. So now I was uh, appointed OIC vice mayor. I was taken out from the prosecutor's office and they made me OIC vice mayor of Davao City. That was when Corazon Aquino ordered the release of all political prisoners. And you know what happened? They all came to me and said, we need your help because uh, we, we cannot go anywhere anymore. So I provided them in all the jobs. And Ivasco, the cabinet secretary, he was an NPA together with another priest, Father Tison of Leyte. They went to Mindanao to become NPAs. And they were chanced upon by the scout rangers and arrested. And they were about to be And so when I learned, it was, I was the only one also assigned to do uh, the preliminary investigation. Uh, and I, uh, somebody said, nah, better hurry because they, they will, they call it salvage. It's not a ship to be salvaged, but it, the term is so salvage is to do him in. And I said, look guys, he's a priest, do not do it. No, 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 do not do it. Uh, so eventually, he said when he was released, he went to my office. But he's, he's a priest and he's good at organizing. He became my technical assistant. When I was elected mayor, he was my chief of staff for so many years. Then eventually he went back to his home province in Bohol and became the mayor of his municipality. And now he's a, a secretary of uh, the cabinet of this republic. That's how it is. So, I, but at that time, I told him to talk to your group. Say, I do not want to fight with you. But if you continue assassinating police and military men, there will come a time when we'll have to face each other. And I, I, I just hope that, uh, uh, you know, it would not be a violent one. But since I am the mayor, I have to guarantee to everybody that. And so with the criminals, I said, it's a very simple thing. Do not do it in my city. If you destroy my city, I will kill you. And I told the drug uh, industry people, do not do it here in Davao City, because if you deprive society of the next generation of the youth, I will kill you. It is a matter of preserving people. And I was talking about it, I was only a mayor. So when I became president, I made the same statement. And you guys are lawyers. There's nothing wrong in saying that if you destroy my country, I'll kill you. If you destroy the youth of the land, I will kill you. And so, it's a threat. <laughs> if you're committing a crime, if you're destroying my country, you are a threat and I could do away with you. And that is what was being used by She's mounting it uh, almost uh, every day. She gets the chance to say something. The, the wife of Samson, the, the wife of Samson. Uh, oh. <laughs> Look, guys, you know the Philippines. I'm sure you were here already. I was uh, adopted by the PDP, Moribond uh, Political uh, Party. It was not really moving except for the father and son, Pimentel and uh, the Senate President. I became the candidate. Uh, I only had two governors in the entire Philippines. Maybe three uh, and but only to really confirm it. Two ladies, Amy Marcos and one lady in Mindanao, and only because of love. 
and uh, I have not a single uh, I didn't have a single uh, barangay captain or uh, even a city mayor. Even in my own region of Davao, which was used to be one Davao, no governor supported me. And in the Visayas, M0, even the, in, in uh, my father, is Cebuano, even in his hometown, our hometown, uh, the Duranos were for uh, Po. So, after the elections and when the results were, and I asked my wife, you know, oh, I didn't have any money. And I, everybody will tell you that I did not. There are some. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm not. Wala, 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 wala akong. Because I had this uh, belief that I do not want to be burdened with anything. And yet I won, and by a margin of six million. Sorry to Gali, where did this come from? I never talk uh, about any leader of giving money to run the campaign. All I did was to go around the country uh, with the money that was, uh, Sunny Dominguez was one of the financiers, but because he was my classmate. And uh, I said, there must be something in this. Uh, I could only attribute it to God. So my victory really was, a destiny. And so to all the people that are really urging a way ouster, a good data here, a impeachment, go ahead. Because if I am ousted or impeach or whatever, that is part of my destiny. It only means that God made me president, but he said you'd only be president for Two months, six months, one year. I have no illusions about being ousted. I'm old and I do not crave for power. As a matter of fact, I, I am almost as if that do not be offended, you guys, Filipinos. If I were to get back in time, I would not. Yun lang, kung pabalikin ako sa kahapon, ayaw ko na. I mean, I, I think I have no use for it, actually. Uh, without saying that kayo mga ilangan sa akin, it's not that, but personally, I have no use for the presidency anymore. I'm tired of politics. You know, I have enough adulation and the clapping of the hands for 23, 40 years of my political career, excluding this one, which is six years. I have enough of that praises and everything to last me a lifetime to make me happy. I do not really personally now come to realize need to be president. But what prompted me to run was because I was looking at the political uh, landscape and nobody there was talking about Mindanao. They were talking about technology and improvement, infrastructure, mounting all the promises that a politician usually give. But nobody was really very serious about Mindanao and drugs. Because when I was mayor, I was really very strict. And if you'd ask me that uh, were there some dead uh, Persons along the way, yes, of course. When you fight crime, there is always that. But you know, if you are asking me now if I killed people on bended knees with their hands tied at their backs, that is not mine. That is not mine. Remember, I mentioned during the campaign that there are police generals into drugs, and you might want to resign just in case I become the president because I will mention you publicly. And if you're kindly uh, 
remember about a few weeks before I became, uh, I, I took my oath of office, especially, came the president. There were already so many killings every day. Go back in time for me and read the newspapers at that time. It's very easy. You can. There's the new technology. You can just uh, backtrack. Why? Why was there a widespread killing? And even after I became president, you should know the answer. We do not, you know, we 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 do not wrap people uh, with plastic tape. We are not producing mummies in the Philippines for export. So what? what? Those, those are indications of torture. But why would we torture when we are going to arrest you because you are committing a crime? There's no need for you to torture. Or you just, you just shoot him, fine, with the one bullet in the head. Why go into this uh, charade of wrapping people? It would indicate to you that uh, they were tortures and uh, forcing people to so, say something. Maybe who are the people that you have talked to about this uh, industry. But um, I must admit that a third of the killings really happened during police encounters. And I know it because uh, I'm not trying to said, pull my own chair. But in Davao, I used to do it personally, just to show to the guys that if I can do it, why can't you? Uh, and, and I go around Dabo with a motorcycle, with a big bike, and, and, and I would just patrol the streets and looking for trouble also. Tagla naghanap ako ng inkwento para makapatay. Yung what's happening now is not. But <laughs> if they are, if you, they say that they are, if I'm afraid to stop because of uh, the human rights and uh, Guys from including Obama. Sorry, I'm not about uh, to, to do that. You arrest me, uh, oust me, go ahead. So God said that you're mayor, but uh, you have been uh, given a mission to do something. But uh, it's only up to there. So fine. Oust me, good. Assassinate me. Better. I have this uh, migraine every day. <laughs> I, had a, my, I had a bad sleep. The last one was this. And I hit the cement. I have uh, a lot of issues with my spine. Uh, so my doctor would want to operate. But you know, my wife was a nurse, and she used to work in the States, United States, and uh, she said just a lot of uh, operations of the spinal that went awry, that went wrong. And she said, that. so that if you guys see me always on the sad no mode, and actually pushing a nerve here to relieve the pain. And even when I'm doing the arms akimbo, and uh, sometimes I do this, it's actually pushing something here to relieve the pain. I cannot afford the operation. It's not because I do not have the money. I have the money to pay for it. It's because uh, my wife said that one uh, nerve cut is uh, you're dead forever. So. Uh, those are the issues that uh, I cannot decide by myself because I'm married to someone who says that I should not have it. And uh, I used to press something here, fentanyl. It's uh, a painkiller. It's being used by patients with cancer. I was only given a fourth of that uh, square thing. There, were, there was a time that uh, if I put uh, two, yeah, but not no more because uh, 
I, I well, of course, my doctor learned that I was using the whole patch because I, I felt better. When he knew it, he blew his stuff and I said, stop it. We, the first thing that you'd lose is your cognitive uh, ability. And if you're noticing it, he said, it's because you are, uh, you know, abusing the drug. Take uh, or Jessic, but uh, I have a pain also with the, I have a Barrett, uh, it's a fidgel thing, it's uh, the GERD, call it. And I have, uh, might as well tell you about my medical history. Don't believe in cancer. What I have is really Berger's disease. It's an acquired uh, thing that you get from smoking because of nicotine. Nicotine uh, constricts the vessels. Alcohol dilates the vessel. Then you can lose your, if just like diabetes, you can lose your punch. And even your thing there, doctor said, you lose it forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, it's blood. It's either it's filled with blood or uh, there's nothing uh, to pass it on there because it's all constricted. One thing about uh, Berger disease is just stop smoking. Yeah. Especially guys with cold hands, they are prone to, if you smoke, you're prone to. Means to say that your whole system is not really working well because uh, of uh, blood circulation. But back to this thing about you know, uh, the Padilla, I'm sure you were already around. Padilla said that uh, during the time of uh, General uh, Santiago, he was here uh, in an, another event. He said that there are already four million Filipinos, uh, three million, sorry, addicted. And that was a figure he gave two years ago or three years ago two and a half, three years. My count has not been made public, but I'm nearing the 800 already as they surrender to the barangay, to the police, to the mayors. And I am sure that I will breach the million mark by the end of the year. So with four million, drug addicts spread all throughout the country with so many municipal mayors, city mayors, and policemen into it, the industry. What am I supposed to do? This is a matter already of a national security threat. Four million addicts is four million addicts. Also, you want a visual thing about the drug industry? Bigay mga sa akin sa alas ba yun? Para maintindihan so that you understand that this Duterte is a killer. Far from it, actually, I'm trying to preserve my race. God, I'm trying to save my. You want a visual thing? Oh, okay. This is the drug industry of the Philippines. You know what? Is there Region 10, Mindanao. Is there any congressman there? If you have a good site, one mayor, ex-mayor, another mayor, another mayor. Each page is uh, with the list of names. You know how many is this? 6,000. Mayors and uh, is a representative Vicente. Mayor Lawrence. So if you want to know more, more Lawrence of uh, Lanao. Say so that uh, you're into a fishing expedition. Of course not. I'm a lawyer, I'm a prosecutor. Look at this person. There, the one, a Caucasian looking, Ulul. Luot, general. The one I mentioned it. There are two generals here. 
No, this is the drug industry. Sabi ko nga eh. You worry about the 3,000 dead, a third of them poli during police encounters. I don't know about the rest. And you do not worry the drug industry, 4 million. Pan. And you worry about the, you're sad about the mayor who was killed inside the cell. And you want to pull down the PNP because the son of a bitch died. A mayor violating his oath of office. He was doing drugs on the western side of Bisaya. Odikta, who was also killed with his wife many months ago, was playing the eastern side. I provided the speaker and the Senate president. And I said, it is beyond me. Even if you give me a carta blanca to, to, to kill everybody, then I will run out of bullets and of time. Were it not for the gold soul, a Chinese uh, philanthropist, a billionaire, then I would not have the, 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 the rehab center. Now, let me tell you. They say, this Duterte, why don't he just put them in a rehab? And what I'd like you to know is that I came into the presidency midterm. I am operating on a budget that was prepared by Aquino the previous year. And so how was he supposed to know that because of their inaction, the industry flourished into millions? So there's nothing there. And everybody, you know that it's, that it was a bottoms-up thing. The sloganeering bottoms up. And so what is really left in this uh, building is just enough operating expenses. That's what it is. Bottoms up, we had just had an election. So we found so many tractors and uh, everything there. And some of them were not delivered to the beneficiaries. Why? Because the law... Uh, which uh, allowed them to buy this thing is that you, the, the farmers would have to pay 15%. Farmer or Filipino farmer, where will they get the 15%? So I, I, I told uh, Pinol, so there are so many tractors. Eh? But Kowa says, never mind Kowa. Kowa, Kowa. Well, you give that for free. And so we delivered it to Basilan. Never mind Kuwa. I will... Constricted brains. That's what, that's what they have there. Why do you sacrifice the Filipinos just because they cannot pay the 15% and you withhold the... This kind of stupidity. And so never mind about Kuwa. Just give it to them. So those are the things that were left behind. And bottoms up was bottoms up. Talaga, binuhos nila. They use the money of the government. Everybody knows it. And that is always the case. That's why I said, uh, I am not uh, a, a, a pretending to be someone in the Philippines or even in my province. But I will just try to give a respite to the Filipinos. And then naman ako tumanggap ng pera, so I can have my way. I didn't receive any, so wala akong utang na loob. Meron, pero kukunti. Sunny Dominguez, he does not need it. He has the hotel there to make him happy for the rest of his life. Marco Polo. I don't know if he's stockholder also here. Uh, no, wala na. Where is he? I thought so because he was winking at the girl there, at the, across the room. Ah, uh, uh, 
you can bite, backbite him because you're allowed to do it. <laughs> so yan ang, I, 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 have to, I have to do it. And it's not, it is not really, the, the ones that, uh, for all I know, they're, they're, it's a turf war, just like in Lanao. Do you think that the, 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 the drug that's the, the largest producer now of drugs? Why? Because they're, the Maute and the rest are fighting it out, for just like the cartel. And if you read uh, uh, Ion, uh, forgot the, he has a good book about South America. And Ion, uh, is uh, the one is uh, the new one is uh, uh, there's a sequel to that and there's a new book uh, we are already in the state of narco politics two three generations ago Nanjana it was already we were already there and with the election of uh, the wife of Samson the portals of the national government opened to the creeping, insidious, and virulent drugs. Imagine, foreign, Secretary of Foreign, uh, Secretary of Justice, running the drug industry inside. Until now, if you want to order, they, they are now in prison, but they were distributed all throughout the country. It's being run now. That is why the next order was that if there is a cell phone found in the, in the cells of any, in, any jail here, you're out. I will fire you. I will fire all of the superiors there. Because the drug industry, just like in America, is run by the inside. They have the contact. They are the lieutenants. The big ones are already out of the country. There's a big digital map there. And they would just say, in the Paco area or Santa Ana or Tondo, there's this morning. You pick it up there and that time. And it's a uh, real time. And you deliver it there. You get the money from this guy in the corner standing. So how do you fight it? And even China is having a serious problem now with drugs. Yan ang mahirap. They're really having a headache now. Because, uh, you know, uh, cocaine and heroin, you have to have the puppy. But drugs, you can use, cook it inside your yard. And it's happening now in America. They are realizing it. But for all of the posturing, I really do not know why, well, in other countries, especially the, in Rwanda, when they were killing, the, the, they were doing the ethnic cleansing here, or the, just like in the Middle East, uh, uh, let us stop kidding ourselves. They are also doing it uh, for religious purpose. Me, I am fighting here the crim criminals, all potential users, and if you're a user, you must be, you must be a pusher if you are a user. Why? Unless, of course, you're the son of Ayala and Gokongwe. Then you have to have somebody to contaminate to support your, or else the monkey. You have to have the fix of the day. So I'm having a very serious problem here. And uh, I do not have, uh, I said, were it not for that uh, kind of person, human being of China, I would not have this uh, facility good for 10,000 people. Diyan nakakaawa ang Pilipino. Then they, they attack me for uh, human rights. You know, in every demonstration, let me tell you frankly, in every demonstration, it's the yellow host shouting for my ouster. But you will never hear it from the communists. Because I am the president belonging to the left, actually. 
And I, everybody would tell you that I was crossing the ideological borders even before I became mayor. Find a policeman or soldiers who was, who, who was taken hostage there. And they would tell you the person who would go there to the mountains to, to retrieve them. The Reds would never demand my ouster. They will die for me, believe me. That's the reason why I was able to convince them for a talk. There have been, uh, it, it starts with the good intention, pronouncement, everything. And at the end of the day, it uh, ends with a stalemate. So do not believe in that shit that uh, they will never go for the ouster. Look at their, their posters. They will just condemn the burial of Marcos. But that was really the line, their lines, their favorite lines, actually, because Marcos was just their enemy. But for those who cannot forget, you are condemned to enjoy your grief until you die. Marcos, when he was buried in, in Hawaii, you know, the Americans are very strict with that. You cannot go around the law, the law and preserve your body there. It's not allowed. You have to go inside the tomb. Mar Marcos, at the time, uh, they, they got him out there, bring it to the Philippines. Oh, the ashes. Or at the very least, uh, skeletal remains. And by the time that he was buried there, in living in Amagani, it's just ashes. So, and I... And they would just put to me bad guy. My mother led the Yellow Friday movement in Davao City. You can ask everybody and anybody. Sunny will tell you. She was the only one in the plaza bowling at the military because all of the audience were policemen and Philippine constabulary at the time. It was my mother who only stood up and bullshitted them in public. And there were only four of them walking the streets of uh, every Friday until it bloomed into something big and eventually the revolution. No? Baka hindi nila alam yan. The Reds would never. And you can go to the mountains and ask the a regular armed NPA and ask them, who's your idol? So, let me disabuse your mind about it. There are actually two groups there. The group of the yellow who cannot accept defeat. So they keep on making noises and making contacts with this uh, lady there. I will not mention her name because she's a lady. And she only made it big because she married an American, a black one, millionaire. And she inherited the money. And now she's talking as if she's. I said, uh, I, I, I would like to uh, I, I, I take your questions. But let me just end my story. Because uh, uh, I, I like this uh, adage which he said when he was the president of the United States of America. And he's also one of the few heroes that I have in mind. One is Rizal, my father, then this guy. And he said, uh, if I were to try to read, much less answer all attacks made on me, this shop might as well be closed for any other business. I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep doing so until the end. If the end brings me out all right, what is said against me won't amount to anything. But if the end brings me out wrong, then angels of God swearing I was right would make no difference. Abraham Lincoln. Great uh, statement that he had. And for my, me, I just, two. two. There was this saying in the YMCA dormitory. And it's always there, and I've memorized it over time. And uh, 
He said that, I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do to any fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. So for those of the bad guys, putang ina, papatayin ko talaga kayo. Really. For all of the gangsters and with the ill intentions of this republic, do not try to fuck it, guys. You lose not only your pants, but your life. I will not hesitate. If it is my country, the interest of my country and the people, if it's the one at stake, you can be very sure. I would not, I have no doubts in my mind that I know what I should do. The threat of drugs and terrorism is very real. If the ISIS loses the land mass and if they are driven out, they will start to spread around the world. And they've always uh, dreamt of this caliphate in Southeast Asia, and obviously it's Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines because of its Muslim population. I'm not saying uh, the Moros, no, they do not have anything like that, except the Maute who said that they have pledged allegiance to. Terrorism is very real. And uh, if finally the ISIS is defeated, it will just sprout everywhere, just like any revolution, because it's a, a dialogue. What happened before in Malaysia, many never got it really correct. What happened in, 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 in the southern states, including Mindanao, you know, Malaysia, no? there was this resurgence of Moro nationalism. Because they were the, they are the originals there in Mindanao. When Magellan I said arrived, Mindanao was already 100 years ahead. At my post, Tesla, there was a post in the fight against imperialism, uh, the Spaniards and the Americans. Islam was their rallying point. So that, that thing there is not new. It's not really a rebellion of, it's the resurgent Moro nationalism. It is, it was their land. So that you have to make concessions. Now believe me, they are, the barest minimum would be really federalism. And mark my word, I would not be here for, for, for all the time. If we do not adopt federalism, there is no way that peace can be attained in Mindanao, now or in the future. That's why those who are resisting federalism, because you want to maintain the unitary type, which is actually a, a structure for despots and kings and uh, authoritarianism. And I don't know why the Americans, when they left us in 1946, coming from a federal country, did not give it to us. Was it because of the parity rights which they were interested? Because it was attached in that constitution that the Americans would enjoy the same privileges to exploit and develop natural resources, just like a Filipino. Or it was really with the good intentions and we are an island separated from one another, 7,000 of it actually, it would be good to have a strong president. But if I may suggest, I'm telling you now, and you have my word, if they can come up next year or the sooner, whatever, uh, two, three years from now, my term is six years, but if they can craft a constitution creating a federal setup, a country, and uh, uh, providing for a strong president, just like the, the, the type which uh, France has, 
then I am willing to step down without waiting for the six years. Because then I said, you would have, uh, you would need a, a president. It is not good for a pure parliamentary type, just like in Britain, because it is not responsive at this time. Remember the double-decker was uh, uh, blown up by the, well, the ISIS, maybe at the time already. Uh, Britain at the time could hardly move because uh, of a parliament and it's a collegial body, an a collegial decision. So the Prime Minister was, uh, could not even say a statement of uh, why, where, how. Mm -hmm. so it's not good. You, 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 you know, in, in times of, uh, you have to have a strong president, I said. A federal type, a strong president. You might want to just give him a few of the powers. Five powers, but so on to dissolve the parliament, create a uh, call for a constitution, be the commander in chief of all armed forces. Because you need it at this time in our life. And uh, maybe two additional powers, but always there has to be a strong leader at this time. Cannot be a parliament or something which you have to discuss after. Belongs to one man. And it's all commander-in-chief. That is what I am advocating. But for me, I said, I told Senate President uh, Pimentel, and uh, they were here during the National Security Meeting, and the Speaker, go ahead, make it fast. And if you can create that model two or three years, I will step down as President of this Republic. No problem. No problem at all. I said that. That's why I said, for those who are asking for my ouster, do not dream about it. Eventually, I will. If you do not like me, go for the federal type, and you are freed of my presence in government. I'd like that thing to disabuse the minds of the people and to remember it. I have no illusions at all. I'm good at this time, already. When I go back there, I have to ride in that motorboat. Uh, I live in the small house there, at ju ju just across. I do not stay here because, I said, uh, they do not, the ghosts here do not wait for night time and darkness. They are there even in daytime as early as 8 o'clock in the morning. And if I stay at the, I don't know where it is, you just might uh, feel that someone is beside you. If it's a white lady, I will willingly oblige. <laughs> the problem is when we begin to chat, there's a, there's a Caucasian there, because uh, the one, the one stays there were the Spaniards and the Americans. You gotta find a, a man with the bird with the uh, pipe in his mouth. And that would be scary. Most of the presidents here are in the past are the Spaniards and uh, the Americans. And there's uh, somewhere the states where the mother of our national hero begged the Spaniard governor general at the time to spare his son's life. It is this there is a place there where she knelt down and cried and pleaded for mercy. National hero, not then. But the only thing about her is the memory. Uh, otherwise, it's all wood. It's not a palace, actually. It's uh, full of rooms there and there. But uh, I'm glad that uh, you have uh, had uh, the chance to visit me or the palace for the first time, whichever is uh, convenient to you. To see me first or the palace, it's okay. But that is my story to you tonight. Thank you and good night.